In a fast-paced society, we are taught to focus on problem-solving skills and to dismiss our own emotions or to suppress them because they are not important. But dismissing or suppressing our emotions over the long period of time is actually detrimental to us. It can lead to us being having the inability to build meaningful relationships, the inability to regulate our emotions, reduce our capability to handle anxiety and stress, and over a very long period of time, it can even lead to a physical health breakdown. It is very important to understand the role of emotions in our lives and what they are trying to tell us. Without emotional awareness, it is almost impossible to understand the reasons behind your emotions, the triggers, let alone then be able to manage that and to think of a suitable solution to actually overcome your problems. This will also hinder your ability to build meaningful relationships because without emotional awareness, it's also almost impossible for you to actually learn how to read the room, to be able to relate to others, knowing the needs and wants of other people. Emotional awareness comprises of two abilities. One is the ability to be able to recognize your moment-to-moment -moment emotional experience and being able to label them accurately. The second is to be able to make sense, to interpret your emotions without becoming overwhelmed by them. When we understand our own emotions, we will be able to understand the triggers, we will be able to understand the unhelpful behaviours and unhelpful decisions that we have made. Then we will be able to find the correspondent most helpful decisions, the most helpful behaviours to overcome our problems. And this actually will help shift your emotions from a negative to a neutral, even a positive one. This actually helps you overall in the uh, longer term lead to better mental health, better decision making, which will lead to better outcomes for the goals that you want to achieve in your life. This will also definitely improve your relationship with other people. This is actually emotion regulating and with increased positive emotions, it will actually motivate you to achieve more in your life, to stay on track to your goals, to lead a meaningful and fulfilling life. You might have low emotional awareness if you tend to uh, not be able to find words to describe how you feel, which means to say you have a limited range of vocabulary to, to describe your emotions, or you frequently experience either intense emotions or emotionally numb, as what some people would describe how they would feel. Or you may have trouble communicating with others or relating to others. Or you might be very uncomfortable in talking about your emotions. Emotion processing may sound like a big word, but it's actually relatively easy. First and foremost, as part of practice, you may want to sit down and think about an event that has caused you quite strong emotion reaction. So when you sit down and reflect upon that, firstly, write down the first emotion word that comes to your mind. Perhaps it might be anger, right? The next thing that you might want to do is to think about, okay, if you frequently only use the word anger to describe how you feel about the heated moments, right? Think about whether or not there's another word you can use to replace the word anger. Is it always anger that you're feeling? Perhaps it might not be. It might be frustration, it might be annoyance. Maybe becoming irritated may be a better choice of word. Having different words, different vocabulary words to describe how you feel may actually give you a more objective view of your emotions and therefore being able to come up with better suited action plan to overcome the challenges. So if anger is your first choice of word, think about whether or not you can come up with two other words to describe how you really feel about something deeper. Perhaps after thinking about it, your two other words may be disappointment, or it may be sadness or hurt. So these two or three other words may represent a deeper layer to emotions and they are clues to what really bothers you. The next thing that you have to do is to acknowledge them. Gently accept that these are your emotions. They are part of you. They are really what you feel after going through certain events. So there's no shame about it and do not judge yourself for it. After acknowledging those emotions, the next step, is to then ask yourself, what do these emotions mean to you? What do they say about you? They definitely do hold clues to what is bothering you. Perhaps after reflecting about it, 
For example, the anger, the disappointment, the sadness that you felt, it's really about being disrespected by a treasured friend. And this gives you signs what is valuable to you. It means to say that you hold the value of respect, for example, in this case, and therefore you would be able to find out what are the possible actions you can take to address them. Then the next thing you do is to question your own statements. What you have in your mind, are they really facts or are they just your opinions because of the intense emotions that you are feeling? Look at other possibilities, right? Are there other ways to look at things? Perhaps when you cool down and you think about it, there are other things that you might not have noticed before. The next thing that you have to ask yourself is what would you like to see change from the situation? Are you able to change it? Is it within your control to change it? If it is, then plan for action. Think about your emotions shifting throughout this whole process. You should be able to see from an intense negative emotion, gently shifting to a neutral one and perhaps even emerging with a positive emotion. This is what we call regulating emotions. There will always be times whereby the storm hits you really hard. Okay, and you might find yourself needing to take more time than usual to recover. During times like this, it is really very important to remind yourself that you are also human. Show kindness to yourself and allow yourself to take time for the healing process to take place to recover. It is also very important during this time to surround yourself with supportive family members and friends if you need to, to actually reach out to professionals to help you guide through the whole process of healing and to walk out of the situation in a better state of mind. Positive emotions actually trigger reward pathways in our brain and this in turn reduces the levels of stress hormones which in turn lead to reduced blood pressure levels, reduced blood sugar levels, among with other health benefits. It will definitely improve your sleep quality and overall, you will gain a healthier body and of course, you will live longer. Positive emotion actually help one broaden perspectives and look at new possibilities. For example, positive emotions like admiration help motivate you to learn new skills. Feeling joy actually solidifies your present moment of experience and make you seek out new ones. Having the positive emotion of gratitude towards someone actually help you solidify the relationship and create meaningful ones. Pride actually helps you to motivate yourself, right? To move and to replicate the success again and again and again. So all these will actually help you stay on track and motivate you strongly towards achieving what you want to achieve in life. How do we uh, gain more positive emotions? Well, firstly, you can start by trying to create a healthy lifestyle. Sleep enough, eat healthily, Try to incorporate some form of exercise. There's a form of exercise for everyone, right? Cultivate mindfulness practice. Pick up hobbies. Picking up hobbies and interests actually help you stay in the present moment as well. At the same time, it gives you a mental break from the studies or work, whatever that is stressful at the moment, and let you enjoy what you like to do at the present moment. It is also very important for you to socialize to have groups of friends who you are close to, like-minded friends who will be able to support you emotionally through your difficult times. Of course, it is also very important, if you need to, to seek out professional help. There's nothing wrong with it. Everybody needs some help at some point in time. With professional help, you are in a safe place, someone who will not judge you for what you think and what you say, and will help you guide you through troubled times to emerge safely on the other side, moving you towards a stronger, better version of yourself and to create the life that you want.